Hey everyone, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat. I'm talking today with Samesh. Hello. Hi, Christian. Hi, everyone. It's great to have you on. And it's I, I love talking with brand new MVPs. And so I'd love to hear about your journey. So for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? All right. So thank you for having me in this was with this interview. So uh, those who know me and those who don't know me, I am Somesh Pathak. I'm an MVP in enterprise mobility. I'm living in Stockholm, Sweden, uh, from uh, basically from India. So uh, four years in the Sweden up abroad from home. And uh, I'm working for Tata Consultancy Services, that is TCS, one of the largest IT consulting company, and providing support for customers in uh, across different domains. So uh, I'm someone who is passionate about workplace services. So I'm a day to day, like I'm supporting customer over workplace services solutions in tune is something which I'm fanatic about it. So yeah. people know me that, uh, yes, if it's something uh, iOS or Android guy, then yes, it's Omesh. And uh, that's the passion and that lead to me this MVP. So married and with a four year naughty son living in Sweden. Yeah, that's well, yeah, that's that had to be an adjustment just moving up and having those long nights uh, and long winters. <laughs> Uh, for, for it India. was uh, it's not the adjustment it was crazy because when we we actually came in summer in, in, from India to uh, Sweden mm -hmm. and it was in May or May, uh, May 2019 so from 44 degrees Celsius to 10 degrees Celsius yep. and then the first night oh my god why is not getting dark here it was summer <laughs> oh, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so for a few days uh, it was like crazy that uh, it's gonna be dark it's gonna be dark and for like for my son who was like not even a year old he like he took a long time to adjust that we don't i'm not going to sleep until it's dark yeah. so it has been a journey difficult journey you have to block out there yeah for those that don't have small kids i mean yeah you have to uh, it, the having it get dark early is sometimes a real benefit to uh young parents uh yeah. the, the the kids don't know so you have to block out all the light well what's yeah. very cool in enterprise mobility is really just a, a very broad category I know that I have friends that were in mm. kind of back in the nineties, you know, desktop support kind of stuff and just, which could en encompass so many different topics. So what areas do you specialize in? You mentioned Intune as well, but you know, what's your area of focus? Uh, precisely like enterprise mobility being a broad term in which uh, we have uh, like uh, Intune, we have AVDs and everything. So my specialization is uh, again, like Intune is on mobile devices. Uh, which I uh, which led me to uh, go deep dive in those, in those first sessions and getting more involved into those troubleshooting sales and this whatever this new comes in this mobile management world is uh, something which I have a passion for as I'm curious for. So this is my focus area for into enterprise mobility. Well, it's interesting. And, and what was your path to becoming an MVP? Like, did, did you have other people that that's really advocated for you? Or if you've been involved in the community for a long time or kind of how did, how did you hear about and what was your journey? Uh, I would say like we, uh, since when I started working around 14 years back, I was, I, I, I know that you are MVP, you have any share points. So you have a share point MVP and I started my journey at the shape and uh, like at that time it was Moss 2007 and that was 2010. Yep. So when uh, whenever we had troubleshooting calls and uh, going Googling and those things, we turned out to MVP. So if those blogs are something from MVP, these were at my age, that these are the persons who are top notch in, techno in technology. And when uh, moving from uh, SharePoint to Office 365 and then came there at the transforming myself to this uh, enterprise mobility, then uh, five years back, I started uh, learning and then Adam and, Adam and Steve's show that everyone know for Intune, for the YouTube channel that we watch. I started contributing, so first was the learning phase, then I started contributing to the community. I am highly active on LinkedIn and uh, like uh, Discord and Facebook and technical community. So the time was that I should now give back to the community what I have taken from them. So uh, following certain MVPs, Rudy Orms, I always uh, admire him and uh, like Andrew and the uh, and the MVP is in enterprise mobility. So that motivated me that yes, we if uh, we if I'm contributing more to the community, then it's uh, actual work that we are doing. 
and then uh, one of microsoft employee uh, nominated me and uh, then I, that that day i came to know yes i have been nominated and uh, then that email that congratulations on being an mvp yeah yeah that's so uh, following the footsteps of uh, the mvps like you and other like that's inspired me to be there yeah it's it's a uh, I don't get a lot of questions. I'm sure now that you're, you've become an MVP, you'll start have people come up and say, well, how do I get underway? What's the, the process around that? So what, what is your guidance? What are, what are the, some of the things that, that people that want to become an MVP, like they should start doing? Absolutely. So this was the first question that people came to me, like, uh, wow, you are an MVP or how should we also become? So I would say that first thing is uh, community. The more you are involved to the community, see MVP is everyone knows it's, it's an award, it's an uh, it's a contribution, it's a recognition from Microsoft that we do towards the community. If uh, uh, if I've seen people like who are much more technical and strong, who are like, expert in those things, but if the moment you start contributing to the community, is the moment you see that yes, you have the passion, and people will notice you. So I would say there's only one thing that uh, uh, that being an active contributor in the community, reaching out to people, helping them is, is the ultimate journey towards being recognized. Yeah, it's it's a, and how people get involved, there's so many different ways. Some people are like, I, yeah. you know, I don't have time to, to do to the level mm -hmm. as other people, it's fine. You know, there's a lot that you can do and benefits from participating in the community, mm -hmm. whether or not you ever uh, achieve the MVP award, yeah. It, it's fine. There are benefits. In fact, I've had people that have sought after the MVP award who have said, you know, Hey, you know, I, that was a goal of mine for a long time. I've not been able to achieve that, but I've, I've just made so many connections. It's helped me mm -hmm. like personally, as well as my company and my role. And so they see the benefits of participating uh, regardless of the award status, yeah. but it's, mm -hmm. uh, there are definitely some things that you can do to increase your chances, raise your visibility to earn the, the award. Right. Yeah. So, so we have to precisely say the visibility and is there something that comes to the notice then? Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what kind of, uh, what, how are you involved in the community? What kind of activities are you involved in? Uh, the, my primary involvement is like a uh, question and answer, helping people. Uh, for example, uh, we have a very good uh, channel coming platform is on Discord, uh, where uh, like Jonas and Andrew and other guys, they are managing it. And uh, we have uh, channels for there, for example, uh, different platform queries, be it conditional access, air protection policies, enrollments, those things. Then uh, I'm also actively uh, involved in a LinkedIn group, which is for MS Endpoint Manager, 26,000 plus users in which uh, Angel Garcia is managing it. So like, that's the same thing, like involve, getting involved, be on top of it. People ask questions, respond to them. And uh, it could be that my question is, the answer is not correct. It's not up to their solution expectations, but yes, helping out. So I'm uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Discord. These are the basic platforms where I'm active. Plus I'm also writing my own blog where I share my, uh, the, because basically see what I'm, share, what I'm sharing is the day-to-day -day challenges that we face that are unique, that we have you know, not faced anywhere else that I try to share on the social media. Yeah. yeah. It is, do you need to have a blog anymore? I mean, so much is that it's out on video. I mean, what's your feeling of blog versus video? Uh, I prefer blog because I'm not that compatible with uh, uh, like uh, yeah see people nowadays uh, prefer videos because it gives them the look and feel what they want like they see and then they implement it mm -hmm. but yes uh, i prefer blog because writing down on my thoughts taking us some time to write down okay i face this issue and this could be something issue so yeah blog is also uh, people also look forward and i prefer blog yeah. but yes look forward for having my own youtube channel also one day yeah there's something to be said it's like i i, I don't have uh, you know I, I i envy the people that have those that really lovely environments or they go through or even using the Microsoft, the demo sites to go through, but mm. uh, to meticulously go through and, and, and demo on the, and the features where I'm like, I, I understand that some of my uh, uh, best uh, uh, read blog posts are when I do a technical walkthrough of a problem. Mm. So similar years, I say, here's the issue. I see questions are out there. Let me walk you through and do screenshots and actually highlight, Hey, yeah. here's where you need to look. Here's the, each of the features. 
And so even now I've written articles, blog posts that were published three, four years ago that are still mm -hmm. in my top three on my yeah. site um, of, with the new content, which is kind of frustrating when you're writing a lot of new content that that yeah. old content still achieves. But hey, people find your your site through the content that they that they want. Yeah. But, well, interesting. Well, so any other suggestions for somebody who is interested in becoming an MVP? Any other best practice or takeaways from your experience? Uh, yes, one more thing, like uh, be curious, be passionate about technology that you are I think that's what, uh, so Microsoft simply says there are three things, be known, be, be known what you are doing and uh, like be curious, passionate about the technology. So uh, speaking on platforms or contributing to platform is one thing, but if you are not curious here, we're not having your own solutions to the problems that you are, people are struggling with, then you are not that one who's differentiated. Right. Uh, looking into solutions, trying on their own, getting into like technical deep dives, things will help you to when we are, when I'm contributing, when you're contributing to platforms, then people look up to you that you know the technical answers for it. Right. So be curious, be passionate about technology. That's what I feel that helped me uh, because when I'm uh, talking about uh, reading about Intune, I go endless blogs, endless topic, Microsoft documentations and those things. So have that deep knowledge. Yeah, well, like anything, it's uh, yeah. uh, obviously people need to be thoughtful about, hey, what is my role? What, what, you know, what am I, there's what I'm passionate about. I do a ton yeah. of stuff in the community that's on my time. It's evenings, it's weekends, because it has nothing to do with my day job. Yeah. When you can find that, that blended view where it fits in what you're doing with your day job, yeah. like that's a great thing to have, especially if you're with an organization that supports a lot yeah. of the community activities but yeah i think that's another important thing is that people re need to realize that we're not awarded our mvps for what we do with our day jobs it's the things <laughs> that we do above and beyond all of yes. that yes and that's a difficult job i would say like uh, having a family and then uh, eight to nine hours of work like taking stealing out some few hours from the midnights from the night sleep from the family and then writing own blogs Sometimes yep. we get spoiled from the family also, that, but yep. this is what, uh, what the, as you precisely said, that taking out the time and then doing your own stuff. Yep. No, yeah. I think that's, that's an important point that uh, people need to understand too. Mm. Well, Samesh, really appreciate your time. If people want to find out more about you, get in touch. What are the best ways to reach you? Uh, I'm always available on LinkedIn, Discord, Twitter, these three platforms. I'm 24 seven available and to uh, reach me through my blog also and that's the where i'm nowadays more active so you can find out uh, me easily and reach out there well i'll have all the links out on the youtube and out on the blog post as well so samesh really appreciate your time and uh great to meet you hopefully uh, i'll be over sort of in your neck of the woods later this year but uh hopefully you get to meet in person one of these days yep for sure yep thank you for having me <laughs>